I mean, the idea is that your thoughts, your mood and your behavior are all kind of linked. So mm -hmm. if you have a negative thought or an anxious mm -hmm. thought, then it can affect your mood and make you feel down or make you feel worried. And if you're behaving in a way that is likely to affect your mood as well, like make you feel down or anxious, then, you know, that's going to lead to problems as well. Mm. Like you can, so you can change your thoughts and change your behavior to improve your mood, right? So, right, so it's like there's thoughts, behavior, and this feeling. And in order to change the way we feel, mm -hmm. we have to either change our behavior or we can address some of our underlying thoughts. Exactly, yeah, and yeah. And so that, that's called CBT. And that's, that's one of the ways we can challenge anxiety. Yeah, so that's the theory <laughs> behind CBT. So CBT is cognitive behavioral therapy. And that's the kind of principle behind it that your right, right, right. thoughts, your mood, and your behavior are linked, right? So yeah. Um, so yeah, the idea is to change your thoughts and change your behavior to address the anxiety. And then once you've addressed it within yourself, then you know, you're, you're, you'll feel better. You, you, know, you, ne you won't necessarily pass mm -hmm. it on to people. So it's good to kind of like really, um, to, to not let it get out of control, right? Because if the yeah, anxiety yeah, is exactly. out of control, it can create panic attacks. You can pass anxiety on to other people like a virus. So let me, let me, um, do you want, I mean, is it, is it, do you want to kind of try some of that CBT stuff with me? Yeah, when yeah, you yeah. Talk about yeah. Anxiety? Because you've helped yeah, me go for it. in the past, right? So, yeah. so, so how does it work? So if I say, okay, I, I'm feeling anxious. I'm feeling anxious. What are you now, feeling? Now what? So, so if it's, so if it was the thoughts that we're looking at, so I'd kind of ask you, you know, what is the anxious thought that you're having? So the anxious thought is about. that, I don't know, that um, will things ever go back to normal? Um, you know, will... Okay, let's start with that. Yeah. Let's do that one. Yeah. Will things ever go back to normal, yeah? Yeah. Um, so that's a thought. So our brain tries to trick us into thinking that thoughts are facts, yeah? And in reality, they're just ideas. So like all ideas, you want to test them out. And... Um, you know, the way that you test ideas out is by looking for evidence for and against them. So mm -hmm. with that, will the world ever go back to normal? So I guess your worry is that the world won't go back to normal, yeah? Yeah, that's mm -hmm. the worry. So, so what, what is the evidence that the world won't go back to normal? Is well, I guess evidence? like, I guess the evidence is that in a way, I mean, it can't go back to fully normal, right? It's going to be quite a strange new world, a world of lockdowns, a world of maybe more surveillance, <clears throat> you know, um, a world where we might live more isolated lives. I mean, I feel like there's a lot of evidence to suggest it won't go back to fully normal, you know? Um, <clears throat> but I guess, yeah. so you're, you're concerned about it, go, it not going back to um, a state of affairs that's positive and, and yeah, you know, yeah, yeah. something that you can live with, right? Yeah. Uh, so, but I mean, I would ask you to, okay, so think about it. Let's think about the other, like the other side of it. Is there any evidence that things will go back to normal after something like this? Yeah, yeah, there is evidence. There is. I mean, there was the there was the Spanish flu pandemic. Yeah, you know, exactly. There was, yeah, um, bubonic plague. There's all kinds of stuff. So humans go through these things, and they yeah. do come out the other side. <clears throat> and in all, although it might not, in, although it might be a different world afterwards, it's still yeah. normal in the sense that it's people living their lives people living people loving people pursuing their dreams the best they can you know what i mean exactly so, yeah, yeah yeah so that's exactly how you weigh up your anxious thoughts like i mean the other stuff that springs to mind for me is that you know we've had world wars in the past right and you know you can imagine the, the disruption that went on globally with that and all the tragic loss of life mm. um and i can you know you can imagine at that time people would have thought nothing is ever going to go back to normal after this right but you know, and that was, you know, like a hundred years ago or whatever. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So this years so ago, and things have, mm -hmm. things have, you know, certainly gone back to the kind of normal that we would call normal, right? Like, although yeah, things yeah. have changed, but there's still, uh, you know, some positive progress. And sometimes, you know, you know, things change for the better after stuff like, you know, after big catastrophes as well. So, yeah. Um, yeah. So I guess if you look at it like that, I mean, to me, it feels like when you look at history and that's the evidence that we can use in this situation, things have always gone back to some kind of normal, which is, you know, livable for the vast majority of people. So there's no reason why things wouldn't go back to normal after this. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. If you look at SARS, 
in the countries, oh, whoops, sorry, did I just, um, yeah, the countries that were really affected by SARS, they must have thought like things aren't gonna go back to normal after this. But fortunately for them, things have gone back to normal. You know, there's obviously, yeah. there's like lasting effects for some people, um, or certainly in the medium term, there's mental health effects. You know, there's sadly a lot of people who lose loved ones, um, but there, you know, normality in some sense does return, right? Yeah, yeah. So in a way, what you're doing with CBT then, it <clears> sounds like, thank you, that was really helpful. So in a way, what you're doing with CBT is you're kind of going, all right, well, look, this is my thought. There's evidence for it. There's evidence against it. Just to try and almost balance out the thought so that that hardcore negative thought isn't on loudspeaker. It's just one exactly. voice in your head, but there's also other voices in your head. And you can kind of like step back from them a little bit and, 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 and as it kind of look at them kind of thing. Yeah, definitely. So you're basically trying to balance out the thought instead of, um, you know, just having a really one sided view, because like if you have a really um, blinkered view of the situation, then, you know, it's almost always wrong. Right. Like, yeah. You know, there's always there's nuance to everything. There's always two sides to everything. Mm. But we can get really caught up in one specific way of thinking. And then if you let that spiral out of control and you get convinced that that's fact, then, mm. um, then, you know, then that can cause problems because yeah, yeah. you start believing things that aren't true, which also are, are unhelpful for you. Um, so if you balance thoughts out like that, it can be really helpful, you know, and I, I use it with my patients, like, you know, I use it on myself. Um, you know, we've done it before, like, you know, I've, mm. my friends, we, you know, I just think this kind of evidence based approach to thinking is just super helpful. There's also like things that you can do to change your behavior, right? Like there's so much information about, COVID-19 out there, right? Yeah. Making it really overwhelming. And if you're spending all your time looking at that, then that can make you feel really anxious. Yeah. So if you, limit, if you limit the amount of information that you take in, then that could make you feel less anxious, right? Mm. Um, also, there's a lot of misinformation out there. You know, I've heard some pretty wild theories. Um, and some of them are, you know, quite worrying as well. So if you use reliable sources of information, that can be really helpful as well. Um, following the advice that we're being given. So, you know, all the stuff about washing your hands frequently, staying in, not touching your face. If you're doing all of those things, then you're doing things that we know are gonna help protect you from the virus. So that should make you feel better. Mm -hmm. um, talking to people, if you're feeling worried, that's helpful. Distracting yourself from all of these thoughts and, you know, just being overly involved in coronavirus, that can help too. So yeah, it's a bunch of things you can do to, to try and change your behavior, which then improves mm -hmm. your anxiety. That's great.